we have so many evil things. But we thank God that we are alive and that we are alive by His grace. It is by His grace that we are alive. It is not our doing. And we thank God for everything. It is good to thank the Lord. I want to thank the Lord for Bishop who uh, we were there for God, leading him to England and missionary work and for bringing him back safely with his wife. We thank God. It's in our midst today. And uh, I think later on we'll have time to talk to us about the miracle and the work that God did on the earth, that God used them to do. It is very important that we serve the Lord, we worship God. That's what we are required to do. And uh, let us pray, brothers and sisters, it's on that day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, we want to bless and magnify your holy name. Amen. Jehovah God, we want to give you the glory, all the honor, all the praises, all the adoration. Say, blessed be your name, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Father, we want to join the angels in heaven to worship you. They sense all over the whole world. People that call upon your name in purity and sincerity of heart, we join them to worship you. Say, accept our worship, accept our praises, accept our adoration, and let them come to you, Father God, as a sweet, many savor in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Father, if there is anyone who has sinned against you in our thoughts, in our action, in our behavior, let us forgive us, Lord God of Israel, in the name of Jesus Christ. Have mercy upon us and let your great be towards us. Holy Father, if there is any way we have gone contrary to your will, in any way we have done according to not in your will, forgive us. Your word says, There remain therefore rest to the people of God. Today, Lord, we just come and say with the Lord Jesus Christ, the word we're about to receive. That will be a blessing to us and to all the hearers. Wherever this word will come forth and people will admit what we hear it, let it be a blessing to all of us. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord will cover ourselves. And everything we are going to study, where the Holy Spirit take control and let them of our God be glorified in Jesus' name. Mm. Brothers and sisters, our today's topic is protect your God given inheritance. Serve the Lord well. Protect your God given inheritance and serve the Lord well. It is very, very important that we learn to know that the greatest blessing we can have is not our material possession. Is the legacy we leave behind, our serving the Lord. If you don't serve the Lord, every life you have in this world, they have no lasting value. There is nothing that have lasting value, only the service we grant to God. If you truly serve the Lord, there is a great reward. There is tremendous blessing. And for that reason, I encourage us today to listen very well. Because this book we are going to study, Judges, Chapter 2, we're going to summarize the whole book of Judges and go to Judges chapter 2 and focus on it. And it's going to let us know how the children of Israel, despite all the blessings, all the promises, all the good things that God does done for the children of Israel, you know what they did? They always copy the sinners. Just like every one of us. We see our friends who are wearing clothes, they're half naked. What a good idea. We see our friend who are doing party, we want to be like them. We see a friend who are smoking, we want to be like them. We see a friend who are going to party, we want to be like them. Whatever our friends are doing, we want to be like them. And we focus more on the material things than on the word of God. And for that reason, we find that we are lacking spiritually. And my fear is the same fear Jesus Christ had. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? We have baby churches today. You can testify and agree with me. But big church does not mean they are serving God. We have massive church. So they actually boast. They say, well, our church is 50,000 or so long. Our church can sit 100,000. Our church can sit this hundred of thousands of people. God is not interested in masses. God does not say by multitude. And when I want to hear about it and you see what is going on around the whole world, you ask yourself, there is no correlation between the big churches and the life people are living. I live in Dallas, Texas, United States. You may have heard of the news. There are so many shootings here in Dallas every day. And there's churches everywhere. We have big churches here. The, the, this, this thing tells us called, it's called a Bible bet. 
Now, I this is the heart of the Bible, but the life does not reflect the Bible. And that is the sad part. There are churches everywhere. Big, small, every corner, every shop. There are churches everywhere. But we ask yourself, are they serving the Lord? Now, nah, he said, teach me to do your will. For you are my God. May your gracious spirit lead me forward on the firm footing. Brothers and sisters, we need God to lead us aright today. Because we are, li- we, are li- we are living in a very dangerous world. We are reading Judges chapter 2. We are reading chapter 2. Hallelujah. Judges chapter 2. The Lord's messenger comes to Bekin. The angel of the Lord went up from Giga to Bokins and said to the Israelites, I brought you out of Egypt into this land that I swore to give your ancestors. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. For your part, you were not to make any covenant with the people living in this land. Instead, you were to destroy their altars. But you destroyed, you disobeyed my covenant. You disobeyed my command. Why did you do this? So now, I declare that I will no longer drive out the people living in your land. They will be tongues in your sides, and their gods will be a constant temptation to you. When the angel of the Lord finished speaking to all the Israelites, the people wept loudly. So they called the place Bokins, which means weeping, and they offered sacrifices there to the Lord. The, the word, word of the Lord. Lord. Happy to God. Brothers and sisters, this is very, very interesting. The children of Israel were given tremendous promises, just like you and I today. Jesus said, I will be with you always, even to the end of the world. Jesus said, Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every righteousness will be added unto you. But you know what happened? God told the children of Israel, He said, I am going to be your God, I will fight your battle. All that God wanted them to do was to serve him genuinely. But they secretly, <laughs> As, we were, as I was reading, I was actually laughing. They were hiding, serving the idols. I said, oh, I said, God did not see them. God was watching them. They went, they went apart. They are hiding. They are going to worship idols. And God is looking at them and said, what are you guys doing? I want you not to do that. But what were they doing? They were still serving the idols secretly. And God said, what? You want to serve the idol? Go ahead and serve. You know, like one of us, of all, we go to a church, but the pastor preach a nice message. We cry, we weep, we confess our sin. We say, Oh God, I'm sorry, I promise I will never pray today. Oh God, oh, I will use for temptation. I say, Devil tempted me. That's why people come to me and say, Pastor, it was the devil that tempted me. I say, No, no, not even go there, please. The devil doesn't have that much power. If the devil have that power, none of us will be alive. The devil does not have that power. The devil doesn't have the power to make you to do what you don't want to do. So the children of Israel, they were disobeying God. And God said, what? You know what happened? I'm just going to leave you guys. I, I wanted to fight a battle for you. I wanted to do a miracle for you. I wanted to be your God. I wanted to be your Savior. I wanted to be your guy. But what do you want to do? You don't want to serve me. Go ahead. He said, the book of Judges is about the story of the failure of the children of Israel. As is often come out with us today, despite God's love and great promises to us. Judges chapter 2, verses 1 to 23, which is our focus today, is the, is, the, is the story. Is the story of after the death of Joshua and the establishment of a monarchy. This passage serves as a summary of the overall pattern of disobedient punishment and, diso- and, and deliverance that characterize the entire book of Judges. The passage begins with an angel of the Lord appearing to the Israelites at Bokin and reminding them of God's promises to give them the land of Canaan. However, the angel also warned them that if they fail to obey God's commandments and worship other gods, they will face their consequences and great hardship. Brothers and sisters, that's exactly what is coming to us today. Despite this warning, the Israelites quickly turned away from God and began to worship the gods of the surrounding nations. 
As a result, God allowed them to be oppressed by their enemies and suffer great hardship. However, when the Israelites cried out to God for help, the Lord raised up judges to deliver them from their enemies and restore peace. This cycle of disobedient punishment and deliverance is repeated multiple times throughout the book of Judges, with each judge serving as a temporary leader who delivered the Israelites from their oppressors. This passage, con this passage concludes with the death of Joshua and the last of the elders who have witnessed the miracles of God, leading the next generation to turn away from God and suffer the consequences of their sin. You see here that God warned them, I want to be your God. I want to fight for you. I want to do everything for you. But what are we doing? They turn away from God. Today, exactly as the children of Israel are doing, that's what we are, that's what we are, that's what we are doing. We are still doing today. We are not different from them. Despite Jesus Christ dying for us, despite the Bible study we do every week, despite the word we hear every day, despite everything we know about the Bible, well, <laughs> People secretly go and join with their friends to be doing party, to be sinning, to be lying, to be cheating, to be doing fornication, to be getting drunk, to be involved in fraud and cheating and everything. They think they are smart, God is not seeing them. God says, you want to do this? That, go ahead and do whatever you want to do. But the Bible tells us that we should seek for the kingdom of God. If we seek the kingdom of God first, what happens? Every other thing will be added to it. But you know what people are doing today? They are seeking other things first. And God said, well, that's what you want? No problem. As I always say, God will not make us a robot. If he had made us a robot, we would have been able to, we would have been able to press a button and obey him. As I said before, from our previous Bible study, there was an angel in heaven. This angel was one of the earth angels. Listen to me, please. This angel is a created being. This angel is only have the power to create anything. And this angel was in charge of music. And this angel is being watched by God. God was seeing everything that they were doing. This angel, including other angels. But one day, talking from human term, in heaven there is no night, there is no day, there is no nothing. So when I'm saying one day, understand, I'm talking from the human perspective and the human side of the earth. This angel started saying, I am not happy with this, this so-called boss. It's too bossy. It's too domineering. It's just taking over everything. And he's trying to be everything. We're just worshiping him. We're just singing. He just sits down there. He doesn't do nothing. He wasn't happy. You know, he said, sorrow breeds sorrow. Deception breeds deception. Sin breeds sin. That's the Bible says, be careful who you associate with. Because people you associate with, they will either influence you or you will influence them. Most likely, they will influence you. You cannot influence them. Because the power of sin is very lowering. It can lead you into a rabbit hole. But the sin does not have the power to actually dominate you if you just have a little light. This angel planned a military coup. He wanted to overthrow his maker. Michael the archangel, who is in charge of the military, saw this guy and there was war in heaven. And Revelation said he lost the war and he was driven away from heaven, came to the earth. Because he knew he has a limited time, he's very angry. He is very, very upset that he lost the war. He said, No, I'm not going to relax. I'm going to fight back. And who does he want to fight? If you cannot reach a father of a child, what do you do? You are tied the child. That's why Satan of the day is fighting with you. And the battle is not physical battle, really. It's in your head. And it's spiritual battle. That's why you see what is going on around the whole world today. How can a normal human being pick up a gun, arrow 15, a very powerful gun that can pierce armor tank, and he go to his store? People are just going about their business and they just started shooting adults, children, men, women, energy on sight. You just started shooting them. You think that person is normal? No. That is the power of the devil. Somebody is driving on the street. Somebody just overtaking. You just shoot a gun. You think that person is normal? No. 
we are in the last day. People are committing suicide. People are getting drunk. People are taking alcohol. People are being destroyed. They are being deceived. They are taking bribe. They are being corrupt. They think if I can get more money, if I can get more money, if I can get more money, I'll be happy. Brothers and sisters, money, if they give you the whole money in the whole world, you will never be happy. You know this uh this uh Steve Job. Steve Job said, Oh, the last the greatest value is relationship. Steve Job was a multi, multi-billionaire with God that established Apple. He said money has no value. Relationship, friendship, and meditation. That's knowing God. That's what he was saying. He said, those are the greatest value. Because this man has so much money, but the money was valueless to him when he was at the point of death. Brothers and sisters, we are going to leave everything behind in this world. But you know what the children of Israel did? They left everything behind. Instead of serving God, they were imitating other nations around them. People are a nation. People are around you now. You are, you are trying to imitate them. You are a co-worker. Oh, I'm a nurse. I had to dress to expose my breast. I had to pump my breast. I had to pump my butt. I had to work 24 hours. I had to make so much money. Oh, I'm a medical worker. Because the hours are there, they are short of medical personnel. About 2 million in the US in the next 10 years. A lot of people are quitting the job because medical profession is not an easy job. It's a very stressful job. But those who are working there want to be like other. They form a situation. You don't have time for God. I don't have time for Bible study. Please forget about Bible study. Money. Money is the main thing. Ego needs money. Ogo. Ego. Money. I'm not interested about God. This is your Bible study. I'm not interested. I have to work many hours. And when you, know, when you get this point, I think that is everything. That's, that's deception. The children of Israel were, were promised God, I'm going to give you this land. I'm going to be the one fighting for you. But what the children did, the Israelites were surrounded by a nation that worshiped multiple gods. So they want to be like our co-workers. Want to be like our friends. And they were constantly tempted to adopt the practice and belief of this other culture as it is often common with us today. This led to frequent periods of idolatry and disobedience, which brought God's punishment upon them in the form of military defeat in the battle, which brings other hardship. The content show how the Israelites struggle to maintain their unique identity and relationship with God in the face of external pressures. The judges and temporary leaders are used by God symbolize the Israelites' ongoing struggle to remain faithful to their covenant obligation and resist the, the allure of other gods. You know, sin is very alluring, it's very enticing, it's very appetizing, it's very sweet. So when you are committing sin, it looks very sweet. Yes. Brothers and sisters, we have to be very careful. Let us go to Judges chapter 2 from verse 6. The death of Joshua. After Joshua sent the people away, each of the tribes left to take possession of the land allotted to them. And the Israelites served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua. And the leaders who outlived him, those who had seen all the great things the Lord had done for Israel. Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110. They buried him in the land he had been allotted at Timad, Sarah, in the he country of Euphrates, not of Mount Gash. Israel disobeyed the Lord. After that generation died, another generation grew up who did not acknowledge the Lord or remember the mighty things that he had done for Israel. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight and served the images of Baal. They abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors who had brought them out of Egypt. They went after other gods, worshipping the gods of the people around them. And they angered the Lord. They abandoned the Lord to save Baal 
and the images of Asherah. The, this made the Lord burn with anger against Israel. So he handed them over to raiders who stole their possessions. He turned them over to their enemies all around, and they were no longer able to resist them. Every time Israel went out to battle, the Lord fought against them, causing them to be defeated just as he had warned, and the people were in great distress. The word of the Lord. That be to God. Brothers and sisters, can you see what is going on right now? The Lord said, I'm going to fight your battle. You just hold your peace. Serve me. Do my will. Please rest to me. But what were these people doing? <laughs> as I read it, as I was writing, I laugh, I laugh, and life I would be probably say, Pastor Masha, why are you laughing? What's your problem? I say, wow, wow. They were getting a golden spoon. They said, no, no, we don't need a golden spoon. We want to eat with a um, mud hand. God said, no, I want to eat with a golden spoon. They said, no, 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 I don't want a golden spoon. I want to eat with mud. That's exactly what we are doing. We are not teaching our children the value of knowing God. I was talking to Bishop uh, yesterday. I said, when we were very young, we didn't go to church to beg. We didn't go to church to look for money. We didn't have nothing. We were there to serve the Lord with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our spirit. He said, which you not can bear me witness. In those days, we are in the sea. We do evangelism. Christ ambassador, we want to, we want to establish all the churches in Lagos. Soon, really, as the of God, we are the one. We are establishing most of the churches. We go from, we go to Ikate, we go to uh, Kurudu, we go to uh, uh, Moshi, we go to Agege, we go to Oshiri, we go to Obalende, we go to Badagri. We establish all the churches. We are not asking for money. Our goal was to do God's way, evangelize the people, we able to know God. We were very happy. We pay our tithe, we give our offering. We are very excited to serve the Lord. Then, while we are busy serving the Lord, a lot of us are very busy serving the Lord. We started focusing on our children's education. Our children should go to school. They should go to school. They should go to school. The children get educated. We will not lay emphasis on knowing God on them. And they started traveling abroad. Some of them came to America, they went to Canada, they went to England, they went to Australia, went to everywhere. When they go there, they forget their God. Oh no, no, I don't want to serve God, my parents serve. I don't want to live, I don't want to talk about God. And now, the blessing that God has given to us and the favor he has bestowed upon us, those favors started eluding this generation. So you see today, there is so much suicide. There is so much heartache. There is so much depression. People are rich, so they have big car. They have big houses. They have big degrees. They have big fat accounts. Today, the people of God are no more interested in serving the Lord. There is a generation we are right now. And these young people now, who are young, they are not pastors. Because old people like Bishop now, and myself, and this younger generation, they are not the pastors. Very interesting. Now they now say, Oh, I want to be rich. I want a private jet. I want a big church. We are not teaching the word of God. When you come to the word of God, we don't talk about sin. We don't talk about iniquity. We don't talk about punishment. We are now describing seven steps to achieve success. Ten steps to be successful. Fifteen steps to have this. And how to be happy. And how to achieve, how to be a millionaire. How to be a billionaire. And this pastor who came to not know God, after a generation now, they are not teaching this new generation miracle money. They are not talking about miracle. They are not talking about materialization and dematerialization. Me say, what does my pastor Marshall? Meaning, they are not saying people can travel outside the body. Meaning you can just sit on your chair and say, I want to go to the U.S. And I'm talking about how to get visa, how to travel abroad. 
They're not talking about serving God. They're not talking about sin. You can be a sinner. You can do anything you want to do. Come to church as long as you give your offering. We don't care where you get the money. Just bring the money. That is the generation we are today. And this generation, huh, they are worse off than previous generation who even have limited education. With their masters and their PhD and everything, they are worse off morally, they are worse off spiritually, they are worse off everything. And their heart is breaking, they are, they are suicidal, they are depressed, they are not because the material things of this world, brothers and sisters, can never give you joy. I don't care how much money you have. A lady just committed suicide on Friday. This lady is, was one of the first bloggers. He said, this lady, she has money. She was depressed. He said, she's not happy. Life does not work living. She killed herself. Can you imagine that? And this people go to church. A church everywhere. Because the Spirit of God is not in their heart. The Word of God is not there. That what happened to after Joshua. The people were brought out of Egypt. The people that came out of Egypt, Joshua was there. Like Bishop right now, he's teaching the Word of God. Like Bishop was there, he's teaching the Word of God. People may pretend to be, they, they love you, we pray that his teaching will not be in faith. That's my prayer every day. That Christian will not die in our time. Oh, Bishop, Bishop, Bishop. Yeah, I mean, and you have a principal of the school. You have the preparator of the school. You have a principal. You have teacher. You have this, have that. Oh, yes. We love God. We love God. We love God. Because everybody is looking for a job. We love God. We love God. We love God. But when you have a camera to watch them secretly, <laughs> you say, Oh my God. What are these people doing? But we pray. It should not be saying Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is what was going on. The children of Israel, after the death of Joshua, and all that followed Joshua, all the generation died. We are going to die one day. I will say this was not our hope. Don't be the mansion of this earth. According to the physics, anything left on use will decay. I don't care the mansion you build, the private jet you have, the house you have, the education you have. If you don't know God, they are useless. The land. We are going to leave them behind. My father always said, don't fight, don't, don't fight over land. We meet the land here, we are going to leave it behind. That's what my father always said. So my father gave away so much land. He said, don't fight over land. We meet the land here. If anybody wants to build house, give them the land, let them build it. He said, if they don't build house, this place is going to be bush. Animal will come and attack us. Say, let, let people, let, we need more people to come here. My father was giving away land to everybody. That's why today my village is becoming a, a mega city. Because it was giving away land. When you go to the camp, it's a village we left many years ago. Traffic is everywhere. People are moving there. I say, oh my God. It's like I'm in Lagos. So the question there is, are these people know God? People that follow Joshua, they didn't know God. They started looking at, oh, my father served God. He was not able to buy a private jet. I'm not going to serve God. My father served God. He was not able to buy a luxury car. I'm not going to serve God. My father had served God. He was not able to buy, he was not able to build a big mansion. I'm not going to serve God. The generation after Joshua, they went ahead and started doing bad things. The blessing that God has given to Joshua and his generation, that blessing started evaporating. God said, you want to serve these gods? Go ahead. You and I can bear me with today, what's going on in this country around the whole world. The heart of men are aching. There's no more love. In the seventies, you shall have a bear testimony being is an elderly man in the law. Christianity was very sweet. We trust each other. We love each other. We are all brothers. If your brother comes to you, you are not afraid. He was going to betray you. It is no more so today. This generation will have that. They don't know God. May God help us in Jesus' name. And the Lord said, I said I was going to fight your battle. Now, nah, you are on your own. You are on your own. 
I am not going to fight for you no more. Brothers and sisters, let me answer a personal question. I hope you don't be offended. Please listen to me very well. Okay. I don't know why you are listening to me. I don't know you. You have never seen my face. Nobody has never seen my face. You can never see my image anywhere. If you go to my house, I don't have any picture of me in my house. If you go to online, you can never see any of my pictures. I'm not hiding anything. I want to put the focus on the word of God. That's why I'm deliberately remove my picture from everywhere. I don't want people to be focusing on me. The question is, do you know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? People put their picture on WhatsApp to show how many clothes they have, to say they lose your passion. They change it every day. I'm not interested. It doesn't mean you are committing sin. Don't misunderstand me. But is your heart in God? Do you truly know Jesus as Lord and Savior? Are you still secretly committing sin? You know, I don't know you, you don't know me, you don't see me, I don't see you. That is the joy of this, our ministry. I cannot try to impress you, you cannot try to impress me. But the Lord sees you. The Lord is watching you right now. You could just put on your phone there to pretend you are there, but you are not there. The Lord is watching you. Wherever you are, the Lord, wherever you go, the Lord is watching all those friends you are moving with. You leave the church and go and drink with them, you go and smoke with them, you go and fornicate with them. When you go to work, you are changing figure. You are embellishing your number, you are stealing, you are doing everything, you are lying, you are cheating. The Lord sees everything. Oh, I'm a Christian. I am born again. I am free. I'm when you go to a church, you behave like a church person. When you go to the nightclub, oh, you are the chief nightclub officer. When you go to a party, you are number one. Everywhere you go to, you want to be number one. I should say, do you actually know God? Is that what God wants? Is that the life God wants you to live? Where nobody is perfect. Nobody is perfect. We are all sinner. No, no, we are all not sinner. You may be a sinner, but I'm not. I'm washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm redeemed. I'm set free. Brothers and sisters, this is a challenge for you and I today. This is a big challenge we are having. We have this challenge. Hold on. We have this challenge. We have this challenge. Brothers and sisters, this is the question I want to ask you today. Do you know this God you, you claim to be serving? This God you claim to be serving, you truly know Him? Now, He said, uh, he, he said uh, the, the lesson here for us today is that God is still waiting and willing to fight any challenges we may face. If we are faithful to God, the book of Judges is filled with stories of his he really did of the judges who God used to save the Israelites from their enemies and, and oppression through their faith in God. You find that today, I have this right up, you can read it, and uh, I just want to bring some highlights. It said uh, the book of Judges as a whole highlights the need for a strong Bible based church, spirit filled pastors and leaders. To guide the people in their obedience to God and strong Bible teacher. That's what we are called to do as a ministry. Teaching the word, the word of God. If we serve God faithfully, He fights our battles, provides for us and meet our needs. The Bible encourages us to seek the Lord first, to seek the kingdom of God first, and all other will be added to us. Today, we are seeking other things first, which is contrary to God's will. The pitfall of modern Christian is that, similar to the Israelites in Judges chapter 2, is the tendency to forget or neglect the teaching and the command of God and try to be like your worldly friends that don't know God. The Israelites who have been led by Joshua and have witnessed God's mighty power, miracles, and mighty works turn away from God and worship other gods after Joshua and his generation that passed, the generation that passed away. They fail to teach their children about God and his and his ways, resulting in a cycle of apostasy, oppression, and deliverance by judges. Similarly, it is sad to know, with great displeasure, disappointment as a pastor, that the modern false pastors, teachers, church leaders, and so-called prophets are focusing on money, material things of this world, and miracles, rather than teaching the pure and the word of God. Furthermore, many modern Christians are prioritizing their personal desire Pursuit of money, fake miracles, and worldly pursuits 
over their relationship with God and the study of, of, of His Word. They may, they, they may also fail to pass down their faith to the next generation or teach their children the importance of following God's commandments, loving God and departing from sin or singing worldly pleasure. This can lead to a lack of spiritual growth and a weakness of the Christian faith within families and Christian community. My share is the same concern Jesus had when he said, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on earth? The modern pastors are boasting about the size of their buildings, the numbers of the members they have, the size of their bank accounts, the number of private jets they have, expensive cars they have, and where they have traveled to. The so-called church leaders are worse off than the corrupt politicians. They drink from the same cup, speak the same languages, talk with the both sides of their dirty mouth, and live the same lustful life. Who is deceiving all them? The modern, the church, the children of Israel in Judges chapter 2 were warned not to copy the sinner in whose land God promised to give them. Despite the warning, Israelites in Judges chapter 2 secretly were worshipping idols. God warned them not to worship. After all, God abandoned them and they lost all blessing, protection God had given to them. The modern Christians are feeling God likewise. Despite the big churches, marriages are failing, drug overdose is on the increase, various diseases that defy medical treatment is on the increase, suicide is on the increase due to sadness of heart, crime is on the increase, prostitution is on the increase, gun violence is on the increase, kidnapping and robberies are all on the increase. The politicians and pastors are standing more and more alike, preaching the same message yet. They are both corrupt, looking alike, no different. Judgment is coming. God is not mocked. Everyone will be rewarded according to their deed. Dear brothers and sisters, I need to ask you a personal question. Are you serving the law or just following the crowd? Remember, this world is not our hope. We brought nothing into this world. It is certain by now that we don't take anything from this world. Give your life to Jesus Christ now by confessing your sins and your departure from God despite all the promises He has made to be your provider and savior. My prayer for you, my dear brothers and sisters and friends, is that you will know God through Jesus Christ and be filled with the power of His Holy Spirit. May you end well and finish well in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. I want to hear from you today about your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Your spiritual growth is our main concern, not your gold or your money. Receive Jesus Christ now into your heart by confessing your sins now. God knows everything you do. Do not hide. Do not hide your sin. God bless us in Jesus' name. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we are living in a very dangerous world today. As I was studying this passage during the week and as I was writing, my heart was touched. I say, God, where, what is going on? Where are we going? What are we teaching our children? What are we learning? How are we living this life? This is not what God expects of us to do, but it is sad to know that we are failing God. May He not be said, we are the generation that failed God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Verse 16. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord rescues his people. Then the Lord raised up judges to rescue the Israelites from their attackers. Yet Israel did not listen. Yet Israel did not listen to the judges, but prostitute themselves by worshiping other gods. How quickly they turned away from the path of their ancestors, who had walked in obedience to the Lord's commands. Whenever the Lord raised up a judge over Israel, he was with that judge and rescued the people from their enemies throughout the judge's lifetime. For the Lord took pity on his people who were, who were bonded by oppressions and suffering. But when the judges died, when the judge died, 
the people return to their corrupt ways, behaving worse than those who had lived before them. They went after other gods, serving and worshipping them, and they refused to give up their evil practices and stubborn ways. So the Lord born with anger against Israel. He said, Because these people have violated my covenant, which I made with their ancestors, and have ignored my command, I will no longer drive out the nations that Joshua left unconquered when he died. I did this to test Israel, to see whether or not they would follow the ways of the Lord as their ancestors did. That is why the Lord left those nations in place. He did not quickly drive them out or allow Joshua to conquer them all. The word of the Lord. Thank be to God. Brothers and sisters, you can see that in an attempt to see where it's burnt, we shall become a fool. If you truly serve God faithfully, we are fine, we have no problem. But the human nature is that we want the quick one, and the quick one does not pay. Brothers and sisters, give your life to Jesus now. Last Saturday, when we were doing Bible study, after the Bible study, people went to the mall and they died. They were killed. The life is not guaranteed. Mm. Serve the Lord well. But tomorrow is not guaranteed. Because it was in Jesus' name. Mm. We're going to allow Bishop to give us a, a brief testimony of how the Lord used him in England and uh, greet the brethren. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to thank you all for praying for us. We know you were with us in the spirit in the city. Every moment there was a blessing to us. Mm. The Lord grant us safety to our throne. Mm. He gave us good blood to be able to do the things which we are done in his name and for his glory. Mm. Yes. We were able to look to people with the grace of God. And we had the three days revival in Manchester, which was very awesome. And the church there was blessed, and the people had a testimony of a new awakening in the spirit. Amen. We also want to thank God for the strength that we were able to communicate with Nigeria at the same time with uh, America, and where we are trying, we are trying to do some work in the UK because it's kind of you know, Job, but we are grateful to God for his strength. So we want to thank you all for praying for us. And uh, we met old friends, especially our brother, uh, uh, Pastor knows him, uh, Pastor Masha, you know him, uh, Pastor uh, Dickin King, he's not a Dickin. Yes. And uh, he changed his name to Obafemi Femi from uh, Ulumi One. Yes. To Obama Femi. Uh, it was a great reunion because it's been looking at about 30 years or 40 years ago. 40 years now. And that was a long, long time. And for him to still remain faithful to, in the Lord, and we also in the ministry, and he also as a deacon, was a great encouragement that those early days, as Pastor was talking in the teaching time, uh, we are not wasted. And uh, we are grateful to God for that grace is given us, he chose us that early time to know him. Yes. And then he has put us strong to this very day. See, those early seeds were the foundation that God kept on watering and using to bless people today. As Pastor said, it's our concern that the coming generation should know God and be, be strong and be focused in faith rather than in materialism. We thank God for the challenges that we were able to go through. You know, uh, everything there, there's inflation all over the world, but yes. in the UK, I think uh, it's even worse than in America. Yes. Uh, we know things are hard here and there. If you go out, you, it's very expensive to go out and there. 
the, the transport is there, but very, very expensive. So mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about everything. Mm -hmm. We're in the Kings Cross area, which is more than like the city. And uh, things were just so fine. We have done the provision, and we are back safely. We join our heart, and we're able to do that which God laid in our heart to do. We started a Zoom a Bible study with the brethren there, which is very good. Every Sunday by 6 o'clock UK time. So we started teaching them from the book of uh, John. Yes. We went chapter 6 uh, Saturday, and uh, hopefully we'll continue with them uh, as God gave us the grace. Amen. We, are, we should continue to build an army. You know, we should continue to build an army yes. which we march to the land and uh, be able to keep this gospel on for the future generation to come. Amen. So I just give a, a few moments to just reach you all and to, to say something that is in our heart to say. Yes. God bless you all. We we'll, we'll pass so thank you for your prayers and thank you brethren on the line for being there for us. We appreciate you all. Thank you very much. We bless God for everything he has done and for bringing you back safely and for his message. From traveling. So, Sister okay. Elizabeth, if you please uh, give us a testimony of what God has done. Okay. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. We want to appreciate you all for your prayers. We could feel your prayers leading us and God guiding us when we went. And uh, God gave us opportunity to be able to live with the people in the road, in the vehicle, to live with the they the Bible and there was the Bible. Mm. And this was a shock to us. A Christian music in a job, a Christian brother. And a Muslim better education. If you play this music again in this place, Make sure that people don't think that it's your stuff again. That was the challenge. And when I went to, uh, we went to Stratford again, mm -hmm. we met some Muslims who were sharing our tracks. We were sharing our tracks. And I told them, it was a Jesus Christ, we wrote something. We wrote something that people think they wrote to them, it was their own uh, religion that they were preaching about. They would not ask me what uh, the Quran. I said, no, no. Bodies that, 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 that can give out free New Testament, even if it's not free, we should be able to know that anytime we go out on a Bible, we trust, we should be able to give the people at least a New Testament. Mm -hmm. So that as they are trying to win the world, the world to themselves, we are going to war against them. They are winning Jesus Christ, winning uh, the people to Jesus Christ. Amen. That was what uh, I thank God for it, and uh, may His name be praised in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, let me put this to you, Pastor. You remember Pastor Dickin King says it was a tract he read in my car that yes. led him to Christ. Yes. So in those days, we saw post our trust to people we, when we write letters we put we make them into practice like yes that the fertility spirit is like them to do it that people are going to write them about Christ we should stay up their mind we used to send our trust to people by mail yes and uh, we used to distribute uh, New Testament through the Gideon Society mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the King, King said it was a chart he read in my car yes. that led him to salvation. Yes. So we, we should encourage that as we encourage people to serve God, we should encourage them to do more in evangelism. Amen. God bless you. Amen. You know, it, it does tell us when you, when you, when you enter your message, it's like it was, it was in heaven. Somebody with a message, somebody with a message will come and carry you on. You're talking about God. And that one was also something that I call it because in Nigeria, those days, anybody that has that type of a message will look upon like a, from another world. So that's what it's like to everybody wants to be a big man, but we're not big men for Christ. But we thank God for your life. 
that uh, whatever the study are given to you, you use it to touch people's lives. And it has, it's also teach, touching people in his, in his area of influence. We yeah. have got, got to bless her. We have Sister Uche, John Udra, I don't even know John, John Udra Gibe, because I was in the school there. She presented this one time. And uh, the wife is on the line, Sister Uche from Canada. So, we have got to bless her, every one of us. Sister Uche, you remember those days? Yes, I do, I do. I do. Uh, sorry, I've been off and on because of uh, attending to the children. And uh, I thank God for today. I thank God for the, the Bible study. Uh, I use this opportunity to tell us that uh, by this time next week, maybe I will ask the house to pray for me because on the 21st, which is next Sunday, not tomorrow, I'll be leaving Canada for Nigeria. So let me give an uh, advance notice so that uh, that time the house will pray for me for journey messages uh, back to Nigeria. Uh, I know that uh, the, our country, uh, the one I told some of my friends back home that I was returning, they said, ah, what are you coming back to do? The country is this, uh, it's hard, this one, that one. Say, ah. The greater part of my family is in Nigeria. There's only one person that is out. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've been here, I've been out for almost one year. Uh, I'm not feeling comfortable. You know, I, I, no matter, no matter who is who. Yes. I will come out to Nigeria. I know that God is going to fix the country this year. Amen. He will surely fix Nigeria. Amen. So um, I am proud to be a Nigerian. The yes. fact that it is part, it, the, the country is passing through hard time does not mean that it is no longer a country. Every country has their own problem. Yes. Every child has their own challenge. That back here, down here in Canada, life is not easy. Things are so expensive. Yes. When I look at the items we pick and pay for, I say, huh? When I convert the. Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm getting this in. It doesn't that matter. Right. Uh, in fact, <laughs> bam, 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 bam. I said, if I take this money back to Nigeria and I'll change it, I will yes. fill my house with uh, yes, these yes. items. Ah. <laughs> I beg. So, um, uh, we, we shouldn't lose hope in Nigeria. Amen. We shouldn't mm-hmm. lose hope. Amen. God, I mean, Nigeria is a great country. It's just mm-hmm. that we have a set of bad leaders, yes. selfish and hungry, corrupt leaders that will want to pocket the whole country in their pockets and leave the, 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 the general public in, in abject poverty. But I know that God will help us wrestle the country out of their hands this time around. So, I encourage the pastor, uh, he's my good friend, uh, and I'm happy that he continued. I told him he's a controversial man. <laughs> in, in this faith, he's very controversial, and he stands for the, for the truth. He doesn't want to know who it hurts. Uh, he stands for the truth. And I thank God that uh, in America, he has even surrendered to serve him fully in his vineyard. Amen. The Lord will help him to, to establish so many, encourage so many, bring so many to his kingdom. Amen. And as many of us are on this platform, I pray that God will help us to continue to uh, encourage ourselves in the Lord. Uh, if I get back to Nigeria, I'll still hook up. I'll find out, I'll find out the corresponding time. My, uh, corresponding time to this uh, Bible study time and look up every Saturday morning for the Bible, Saturday, mm-hmm. because I know that, that it, it will not be afternoon in Nigeria, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I'll try to yeah, you also be around, present around, around, around for a talk. Talk. Okay, 4 p.m. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I, I will endeavor to hook up. Okay. Anyway, God, God, bless, God bless you, my sister. We okay. share of number one worldwide. God bless you. Okay. I want to thank, I want to thank uh, every one of you. We're going to pray for Nigeria. We're going to pray for Ghana. Sister uh, Beth has sent me an article last night I, I was listening to. And uh, Ghana is passing through a hard time. Another African country that God will help the country. 
want to thank God for being with the bishop and for bringing him back safely mm-hmm. and with the wife. God is on our side. We should just serve him. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Things may be hard, but talk to him and don't lie. God said, I will fight your battle. Yes. Just hold your peace. Yes. We can help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, um, I also want us to remember all the women in this uh, Bible forum. Tomorrow is Mother's Day that we we'll pray God to the God who made many of us in this forum a mother to give us the grace to truly be mothers indeed. That we will be example and inspirators to other to younger generations to be mothers. I just want to let anybody, any woman, any young girl that will listen to this forum today to know that motherhood is a vocation of its own. Motherhood is a vocation of its own. It has no beginning, neither that the, the, does it have end. When we look at the mother of our Savior, the Redeemer we proclaim every day, we will truly know that motherhood is a vocation of its own. When I look, when I meditate on the life of Mary, from conception, it was a life of reproach, we call it these days, but when I met my husband, he, when we have our first baby, I was pregnant, there's one favorite song he used to sing for me. He would be saying, Mary, do you know that your baby Jesus will one day be your Lord? Mary, do you know that baby Jesus we carry today will be the savior of the world. Mary, do you know? She will tell me, Mama, don't worry. You see this baby you are carrying? We want to be our own savior. We want to be a blessing to humankind, a blessing to mankind, a blessing to our generation. You know, it kind of inspired me as a young girl then. But today, I just want us to, to pray for Pray for mothers, pray for women. Many want to truly be mothers. You see, the sad thing today is that there are many women that have children, but they are not mothers. They are not mothers to their children. It's sad to say they are no mother. You know, when you look at the life of Mary, one thing that inspires me, that encourages me in my own daily life as a mother is that in the most trying moments of Jesus' life, Mary was still there. When he was abandoned on the cross, Mary was there at his foot, still crying. In that crowd of torment on the way to Calvary, Mary was still following. We as mothers today, what do we do for our children? One day I was praying, God told me, listen, a mother is a space holder. I like space holder. I even told daddy. I said, mother is a space holder to the children in the family. That today they are having a rough time. It doesn't mean that we, that is their end. When we look at the relationship between Mary and Jesus and God, her calling, how she enjoyed, how she got a glorious end. Mothers, as we celebrate Mother's Day tomorrow, be encouraged that our labor, our sacrifices, and is, too. Uh, mother, a mother is a mother. If she wasn't a mother, it wouldn't be a grandmother. God make you mother, God make us mother. We will be mothers, we will be grandmother, we will be great, 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 great grandmother. To his glory of God, the Lord will uphold us and help us to see our children's children. But it is with a heart full of gratitude to God. That personal relationship with God, it is the only thing that can help us to be what God has created us to be. For every mother on this script, on this line, or that we hear this thing, look at Proverbs 14, verse 1. He said, A good woman gives her own home, but a foolish woman will use her hand to destroy it. May God help us to be that woman of wisdom. That mother of wisdom that will stay with the children, stay with the family, stay with our husbands. At times, it is very rough to, to want to be there. 
But in those tough and rough times, I want to encourage you mothers, I want to encourage you young girls that will listen today, that when that time comes, you want to quit, go on your knees. Just take a moment. Cry. Cry to God. Just cry it out. When you learn to cry to God, I promise you, many of us will also be testifying like Papa and Mama. Be sure. Because they've been there for this long time together. Long decades of years. Do we want to count that to celebrate too? The secret is Jesus. Amen. And inspiration of Mother Mary. Amen. May God bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Please, all of you, keep us and remember us in prayers. Brother Valentine, I want you to pray for our sister Uche, who will be traveling next week. I know you should be with us on next Saturday. And I want her sister Elizabeth to pray for our mothers. And as you are a grandmother, that God will grant, grant our mother here today to also be a grandmother and be, and be the grace to be a good mother. I know you are a good mother because uh, you are doing a good job, as I always tell you every day. Go ahead and pray for our mother, Sister Elizabeth, please. Father and God, we are grateful for the evening. We are grateful for your loving kindness. We are grateful for those in you, we live and move and have our faith. Yes. We say, bless you, your holy name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, we want to thank you as mothers because we are saved. By the grace of God. Yes. And we know that mother, the only way to heaven is through the doorway of grace. Yes. And we want to thank you, Lord, because we are forgiven by the grace of God. Yes. As mothers, we are supported by the grace of God. Yes. We go to the people who give us the grace. Yes. And that we are liberated by the grace of God. Amen. It is your grace in our life. That has kept us. Yes. As mother, O oh God, all the talents that you have given unto us, it is by the grace of God. Yes. We have no strength of our own. At all. We have no direction of our own. At all. Father, it's you that we depend on. Yes. Even as we celebrate Mother's Day, every day is Mother's Day. Yes. But the day has been set aside for words to be poured on Mother, for accolades to be given to Mother. My Lord and my God, we pray today that Lord God, the talent you have given us to do your will. That will be visible for us to do it, to use it to the praise and glory of God. Okay, we thank you because it is by your grace that you are using us. Yes. And I will ask for more grace that you will use us more and more and more. And Father, continue to keep us by your grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The children you have left us with, Father, we thank you. Thank you. Lord. We ask for grace to take care of these children. The husband shall bless us with the of grace. Yes. Everything is by the grace of God. Yes, Lord. Our lives are by the grace of God. Yes, Lord. Our dreams are by the grace of God. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you. Thank you Lord, Lord, that you use us in this day to win more women, to win more souls yes. for the kingdom of God. Yes, Lord. Father, not to win to do your will with the money you have blessed us with, yes. the clothes you have blessed us with, yes. the shoes you have blessed us with, yes. that we will use it to the praise and glory of your name. Yes. Remembering those who are most pretty today. Remembering those who are hungry, yes. that we will do your work, your work by preaching the word to them, O oh God, and bring them out of darkness into your marvelous light. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We pray for long life for every woman that are celebrating today. Yes. We pray for long life, O oh God. Their children will bring forth and bring forth children. Their yes. children's children. Yes. That they shall be grandmother and great grandmother. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we pray long life, Lord. Yes. Father, the enemy shall not cut us short Amen. because we are your own. We bear on our bodies the Man mark of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. All that we go through daily, Lord, we pray for strength. Yes. We pray for direction, Lord, yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we shall not die. We shall need to declare your glory yes. in the land of the living. Yes, Lord. We prosper in every one that has our soul prosper. Yes. We thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that our heart, oh God, shall yearn each day to live holy for you. Yes. Thank you, Father, and Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please go ahead and pray for Sister Uchi and also remember Ghana, Nigeria, and uh, close up for today's uh, Bible study. And thank God for bringing Bishop back. I'm just, I'm just uh, doing this. I'm doing this sometimes. I'm just talking to God because I pray just a conversation with us. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. Right now, Father, I want to thank 
in the end that people will see the Jesus in us yes. and that will draw us to him with the name of the Father and the yes. Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Jesus name, my friend. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, I want to thank every one of you and I want to appreciate every one of you from California and Maryland, Texas here in my neighborhood and Sister Ichoma and every one of you. I ask God to bless you, Sister Paula and Elizabeth, every one of you. And I will thank every one of you for your faithfulness, Dr. Fina, Maryland and Brother Magic, California and every one of you. And I ask the Almighty God to be with us, me and me. Thank God for bringing Bishop back. Yes. As God to be with him, whatever he has done, may he be fruitful. Yes. And uh, may, may his job, may his labor not be in vain. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we love you all. I commend your prayer and I ask you to pray for me as I really do the work of God. And I will do it without fear or favor. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. He wants your grace, O Lord. God bless you.